Hi, I'm Jim Stroud, and this is my podcast brought to you by Evergreen, home of great podcasts like Chad and Cheese, The Talent Cast, and others. Find them online at evergreenpodcast.com. Yeah, boy! Should your resume be one page or two? Well, that kind of thinking is so 1999. If you want to be in line with what's happening in 2020 and beyond, start thinking about your biometric resume. What's a biometric resume, you ask? Well, imagine proving you are best qualified person for a job based not on your past experience, but instead your expertise as proven by your brainwave activity. Yeah, <laughs> that's coming to an interview near you. I'll tell you more about that after this. Employer brand professionals know that doing great work involves doing big, high-level strategic thinking and getting your hands dirty. If that sounds like the kind of work you want to do, come listen to the Talent Cast. It's the world's most highly caffeinated employer brand podcast. Do you love four-letter words? Who doesn't? And then you mix recruiting news and insights in with those four-letter words. I'm Cheese. And I'm Chad. And we are the Chad and Cheese Podcast. Tune in wherever you listen to podcasts. We, we out. Okay, I have to give a big thumbs up to the BBC for a recent article they published called Will We All Soon Be Using Biometric CVs? And I found their suppositions absolutely fascinating. Here's a quote from that article. It was a typical working day at a major bank in Boston that was until two researchers turned up armed with an alarming abundance of medical equipment. Andrew Lowe and Dimitri Repin from the nearby MIT Sloan School of Management had convinced the bank to allow them to experiment on 10 of their finest traders. After all, at an institution where the average transaction involved a cool three to five million dollars, what could possibly go wrong? The traders at their desks were hooked up to bulky sensors which tracked what was going on in their bodies like their heart rate and how much they were sweating. The bankers were split into two groups, the highly experienced ones and the newer recruits. Each was monitored as they went about their usual tasks, making trades and reacting to market events. One clear pattern stood out. When the market spiked or dipped significantly, the veteran traders had much less potent reactions suggesting that they weren't letting their emotions get to them. They also didn't take as long to recover afterwards. The experiment, which was conducted in 1999 and follow up several years later, raised an intriguing possibility. What if you could predict how well someone is likely to perform at work with a few simple physical tests? And when I read that, it reminded me of something I read in the Wall Street Journal last year. The article was called, Brain Scan Can Detect Who Has Better Skills. And a quick quote from that article is this, quote, A team of researchers studied surgeons as they performed surgical simulations and found that they could identify novice from experienced surgeons by analyzing brain scans taken as the physicians worked and predicted that one day companies will be doing something similar to assess the most qualified candidates, end quote. Could it be that once these types of tests are perfected, that candidates pursuing high-pressure jobs will be hooked up to a bunch of wires and doohickeys and, and undergo some sort of stress test to prove that they are better under pressure than the next candidate? Yes, yes, I'm saying that. That is a very real possibility. Listen to uh, more from that BBC article I quoted earlier. From how a person's eyes move around a computer screen to how well they tolerate glucose, 
our bodily responses can provide a surprising level of insight into everything from decision-making abilities to memory. These links sometimes hold up even decades after a person is tested. In recent years, it's become increasingly apparent that all kinds of seemingly irrelevant data can be powerfully predictive. By combining biometrics with information about the productivity of the same people, scientists have started to unearth some unexpected factors that matter in the workplace, including how strong a trader's emotional reactions are and how much time colleagues have to chat. Enter the Biometric CV, a profile of physical metrics that could allow future applicants to show their right for the job. Though biometric data is usually associated with things like fingerprints and futuristic iris scanners, it's actually a surprisingly broad category, encompassing human characteristics. Some less well-known kinds of biometric data include the rhythm of a person's typing, or even their social habits, such as how often they speak to other people. I think before a biometric CV can hit the mainstream, at least the way the BBC envisions it, the use of biometrics in the workplace would have to be common as well. And as I say that out loud, <laughs> I'm thinking that may be sooner than any of us think. For example, some companies are using fingerprint scanners on time clocks to track when employees were working and to decrease the chance of coworkers clocking out their buddies and thus cut down on undeserved overtime pay. Hmm. Uh, I, I happen to know too that companies also like using biometric data for security reasons. After all, uh, knowing who was in a secure location and when and blocking unauthorized users has its clear advantages. And then you have the uh, convenience of keyless locks based on biometric data as well, which allows certain employees entrance into a building. So all of that is cool. As I think on biometrics actually, and how it's being used today, those examples and others that are popping in my head. It all sounds really amazing, but as with all things, there are pros and cons. And just from the top of my head, I can think of some pros and cons to not only biometric resumes or biometric CVs, as the BBC calls them, but biometrics in the workplace in general. And you know what? I'll, I'll share those thoughts after this. Entrepreneur Kylie Jenner makes an estimated $1 million per sponsored post on her Instagram, which makes her the highest paid celebrity influencer on the social media platform, according to the 2018 Instagram Rich List, compiled by Hopper HQ and Automated Instagram Scheduler. Jenner is followed by singer Selena Gomez, who gets $800,000 per sponsored post, and star soccer player Cristiano Ronaldo, who earns $750,000. Together, these and other up-and-coming stars contribute to the $1 billion influencer market, which is expected to double in value this year. Now, all that is great until there is an Instagram bug and you lose over a million followers, which happened to Kim Kardashian, Justin Bieber, and several others. If it could happen to them, it could most definitely happen to you. The moral of the story? Don't build your house on rented land. I suggest you do what I did and get your own mobile app with Superpass. Superpass makes cutting edge content apps easy, instant, and affordable. So whether you already have content or are looking to start making money by selling your podcasts or videos online, Superpass can help. So sure, Build up an audience on social media, but drive the traffic to a property you own, and that property should be Superpass. For more information, visit Superpass at www.superpass.app. That's www.supapass.app. Superpass.app. And be sure to tell them Jim Strauss sent you. Okay. If you wanted to research the pros and cons of using biometric data in the workplace, no doubt you will discover the more popular talking points that I'm about to share with you now.
First, the pros. Whereas it's easy to fake an ID badge or time card, retina scans and fingerprints, nah, not so much. This means that the number of people forging security devices is greatly reduced. Another point, or pro rather. Biometric systems are a convenience because employees will not have to carry ID cards. They just need to have their fingers or eyes scanned. And another point. Biometrics are highly regarded for being scientifically accurate and effective. Since unique biological characteristics are used to prove identification, this type of technology is considered as one of the best methods in the area of security. But on the con side, here's the point. The biggest negative is the concern for privacy and the feeling that such technology is too much of an invasion into one's personal life. Another point. Criminals can find ways to get around biometrics. In fact, when I was researching for this episode, I found YouTube videos demonstrating how to trick fingerprint scanners using melted candle wax. <laughs> no joke. And finally, there is the money aspect. The biggest reason why many organizations avoid using biometrics is that technology is just expensive. While it is innovative and accurate, it is not cheap by any means. Not only that you have to purchase the device, but you also have to buy the software that runs with it as well. So that's a lot of information to digest. What does it all boil down to in terms of companies requiring biometric resumes in the future? Well, I, I think this. What if I wanted to work for your company but did not want to give up my personal biometric data? Which means I would not submit my biometric data to you, nor would I volunteer myself to be tested on things like brain scans, heart rate, or anything else I consider to be invasive. Would you bar me from consideration? And if you did, how do you think that would affect your employer brand? A few years back, the public was outraged when companies began demanding the social media passwords of their employees and job applicants. As a result, nearly half of the states today have passed laws prohibiting employers from asking applicants and employees for their social media login information, uh, to bring up their social media pages in the employer's presence, to change their privacy settings to make the page accessible to an employer, or to add anyone as a friend or contact to a social media page. And just in case you're curious, I'll provide a link to those state laws from my site over at jimstroud.com. Well, what do you think the public outcry will be if potential employment is denied because people who are more privacy conscious don't want to give up what they consider sensitive data about themselves because they just don't trust your company. They don't trust them enough to secure the data once, they've, once it's been given over. Uh, they don't trust the company to delete the information once it's been promised that they would delete it. And most worrisome of all, uh, the applicants or the employee doesn't know whether or not a company would ever sell their information to an unknown third party. As, as far as I know, there are, only, uh, there are only three states, Illinois, Texas, and Washington, that have enacted laws regulating biometric data to protect employee privacy concerns. Three states is a long way from 50 states and any and all companies using biometric resumes in the future, or biometric tests for that matter. Uh, using that kind of thing to qualify candidates on this side of the pond, well, those companies will want more laws on the books to reduce litigation risks because <laughs> I got to tell you, I think there's a risk there. But, uh, you know, that's, that's just my opinion. What's yours? If you love what you heard, hate what you heard, or don't know what you just heard, I want to know about it. You can leave a comment concerning this podcast on my website at www.jimstroud.com. In addition to finding source material and related information for this podcast episode, you'll find other goodies that I hope will make you smile. And if you have not already, please subscribe to my website. Your continued support keeps this podcast train chugging down the track. <laughs>